All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the March 9th Complete Streets Commission meeting. This is a teleconference meeting with Complete Streets Commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating remotely to ensure proper social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. Excuse me. Um, I now would like to introduce commission members and staff present. I'm Chair Adina Levin. Commissioners present include, present include Brian Altman, Katie Baruzzi, Jackie Sebrian, uh, Sally Cole, John Cromie, and has Lydia Lee got here yet? Lydia Lee is not yet here. Um, uh, commissioners absent. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Ah, okay, hello, perfect, <laughs> wonderful. And, and, and also Lydia Lee as expected. Um, and commissioners known to be absent include J.K. Jensen and Elizabeth King, and staff present include Kevin Chen and Patrick Palmer. Um, so will Patrick Pommler please provide instructions to the Complete Streets Commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Levin and members of the Complete Streets Commission. Welcome everyone to the March 9th Complete Streets Commission meeting and thank you for attending. At this time, we ask that the members of the commission please remain on screen for the duration of the meeting. You will control your own webcams and microphones. Staff will engage webcams and microphones to make presentations and respond to members of the commission. Uh, for members of the public who are in attendance and wish to provide public comment, after the chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on, please engage the raise hand feature. I will then have the ability to open your microphone and you can provide your public comment to the Complete Streets Commission. Uh, for members of the public who are calling in from a landline or cell phone, you can also press star nine to raise your virtual hand. That concludes the instructions and I return the meeting to the chair. All right, uh, thank you very much. So we, we're gonna move on to item C reports and announcements under which staff and commission members may communicate general information of interest regarding matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No commission discussion or action can occur on any of the presented items. Um, so uh, from the staff have any reports and announcements under this item? Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. So two quick items for the commissioners um, for, your, for your benefit. The city council took two actions pertaining to transportation. The first one is uh, one that have came through the Complete Street Commission actually, which was the university park on street parking removal at Millie and at Rose Avenue. So the city council took action, which was denied, uh, which they deny the appeal, which was raised by a, a business owner on that, that was located on university and subsequently approved the parking removal at those locations. The second item is also an item that came through the Complete Street Commission, which was the El Camino Real no parking zone. So the, that particular project also got approved by the city council. Uh, and uh, the specific items are a no parking zone on the west side of El Camino between middle and college, and then also no parking on the east side, approximately from 700 El Camino Real down toward the Menlo Park and East Palo Alto city limit. Uh, there are also a couple other requests that went in uh, pertaining on college uh, that the city, uh, that the Complete Street Commission have um, heard of as well. So with that, I will conclude my course and announcements. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you uh, uh, very much. And um, uh, if, if I can, chime in as a factual addition, um, what the city council did regarding college was approve additional short-term parking spaces um, uh, in order to uh, help provide access to the businesses who would have that short-term parking while they do not have the parking on El Camino. Um, let's see, um, so we will now move under Item D under public comment, where the public may address the Complete Streets Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. Please clearly state your name and address or political jurisdiction in which you live. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda and therefore the commission cannot respond to non-agendized issues brought up 
under public comment other than to provide general information. Um, so uh, uh, staff, do we have any uh, public comment at this time? It does not appear so. Uh, all right, and um, I, I, I suspect that all uh, here participating as members of the public are aware of how to participate on, under public comment by raising the, your hand with the Zoom feature. So since there are none, we will move on to the next item of regular business under which the commission considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require commission approval. And uh, the first is to accept the Complete Streets Commission minutes from February 9th of 2022. Um, are there any uh, clarifications from the commission before uh, taking public comment on the minutes? All right, um, are there any members of the public that have comments on the minutes for the uh, February meeting? I see no hands from members of the public. I'm bringing it back to the commission. Are there any motions regarding the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right, um, can staff help us vote here? Okay, great, thank you. So we have a motion and a second on the table here uh, for commissioners that would like to vote affirmative. If you can please raise your hand and hold it for a couple of seconds, that would be great. I am seeing all the hands. Um, Commissioner Sibrian, uh, are you voting? Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And then I, I assume Commissioner Cuomo will abstain. Um, Motion to yeah. Perfect. Although I would like to move that uh, minutes are now 56 seconds instead of 60. Okay. Um. So um, the uh, international time standards not being within the purview of the Complete Streets Commission, I will now move on to the next item of business, which is to recommend to City Council the preferred Complete Streets Commission uh, member count, um, and we'll ask staff to introduce this item. Sorry, Madam Chair, I believe E2 is the Did I miss something? Um, okay, sorry, I, I incorrectly scrolled my chair notes here. So the next item is to provide feedback on the Ravenswood Avenue bike lane pilot project to be included in the Ravenswood Avenue resurfacing project, um, where we will start with a presentation from staff. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay, if I can just have a confirmation that you are seeing the front page of my presentation full screen. Awesome, thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Madam Chair, member of the commission and members of the public. My name is Kevin Chan, transportation engineer, senior transportation engineer with the city's transportation division. Um, very excited to present this item before you tonight, um, as the chair noted, this is to um, staff is seeking feedback from the commission on a pilot project that we are proposing on Ravenswood Avenue. And I'll go into some of the, the details. Excuse me. Uh, before I do so, just a quick rundown of tonight's agenda. Staff will briefly go over the background to bring us to where we are today. Uh, some of the scope revisions that that really has to do with the resurfacing project, as well as uh, why we are here tonight with the bike lane pilot proposal. Uh, finally, going into some of the recommendations pertaining to the pilot itself, uh, and then the next steps necessary uh, to proceed this project forward. Uh, some of you might have known this, but, but um, this item actually came to the commission, or a version of this item, came to the commission back in May of 2012. Uh, at that time, the, the city had a, a CIP project that was intended to resurface Ravenswood from Alba all the way to Middlefield. And as a result of that, staff took the opportunity to evaluate some 
uh, the, the opportunity of installing a bike lane to continue the stretch uh, within that stretch of, um, of the resurfacing project. Uh, mainly talking about here would be Alma to Noel uh, because that's the stretch where it's currently missing uh, bike lane on the eastbound direction as well as the westbound direction. Uh, at that time, there were several conversations that, that, have, that went into the, the items, which were very fruitful. At the end of the agenda item, the complete street commission uh, elected to approve the following uh, recommendation, which was for the eastbound direction to provide a permanent bike lane uh, while retaining the two existing vehicular travel lanes. And on the westbound direction, due to some of the congestions uh, that we were seeing, uh, the commission elected to uh, go with the, the bike route and two travel lanes. However, there were some additional uh, recommendations that came from that meeting as well, such as uh, looking at some, innov uh, some innovative stripings to, to further highlight the bike route facility for the westbound direction. And then also as part of the final design <clears throat> to look for opportunities to widen the median. So those were notes that, that were taken uh, by staff as part of that meeting. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, why are we here tonight? Uh, basically, as part of the, resurf the Ravensburg resurfacing project, uh, we were gonna go ahead and resurface, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, from Alma to Middlefield. However, um, toward the end of last year, the SRI, which is, uh, I guess, formerly the Stanford Research Institute, came to the city with a proposal to redevelop their master plan uh, or mm -hmm. their existing current campus, which is bounded generally by Ravenswood, um, Laurel, Middlefield, and the residential development on the south side. So as a result of that, typically for a project of this size, um, a lot of construction activities will happen assuming the project gets approved. And as a result of that, um, the project will most likely have to resurface part of um, Ravenswood as well. So that would specifically be between Laurel to Middlefield. As a result of that, staff see an opportunity to reshift some of the resources uh, to, to further address areas that were not part of the original scope. Uh, primarily, we're talking about Al Camino, uh, Ravenswood from Al Camino to Elma. So that's, that's why staff has this opportunity to revisit both the, bike, the resurfacing project as well as the bike lane project. Mm -hmm. So of course, given, sorry, uh, given the uh, revision of the resurfacing scope, staff is taking that opportunity to reevaluate re the bike lane operation. Uh, specifically, again, based on the May 2021 meeting, looking at the westbound direction, because that is the stretch where it's currently um, missing a bike lane facility. In order to do so, we divided that stretch of Ravenswood into three sections. Uh, the first one is from Merrow to El Camino. Based on our preliminary assessment, there are definitely some civil work that would be needed if we want to include a bike lane. As a result of that, we decided to um, that it needs further evaluation as part of the resurfacing project, which we will do in the near future. The stretch between Elba and Merrill, uh, the travel lanes are currently relatively wide. So we have preliminary concluded that we will be able to add a bike lane in there without reducing any of the vehicular capacity. So a very fairly minimal impact in terms of construction or, or operation for that particular stretch of westbound of Ravenswood. Uh, finally, for Noel and Elma, uh, given that we had a, a study that was previously done uh, using volumes that were conducted pre-COVID, plus some of the existing data, some of the current 2021 count data and just anecdotal observations, we, we are seeing a reduction in, in volume. So specifically, if you compare the, to, the counts that we collected in 2021, compare that to pre pandemic pre-pandemic level, we're seeing a drop of approximately 20 to 35, depending on the directionality of those counts. So as a result of that, uh, staff sees an opportunity to conduct a pilot program 
Now, there are definitely uh, some challenges that we'll be seeing. So as a result of that, we are establishing, we are uh, recommending a six month pilot program, which is fairly typical uh, when it comes to um, testing out a pilot program. It could be a little bit longer, but I think six months is sort of the, the general sweet spot right there. Uh, and the pilot would be to install a bike lane on the westbound direction. And as many of you might have known from the previous uh, iteration, that in order to do so, we do have to reduce a travel lane. So as a result of that, the pilot would be to test out a, a um, dedicated bike lane and also reducing the vehicular travel lanes from two to one, as, as shown here by this illustration. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are definitely, um, we want to make sure that as part of the pilot program, that we set up some parameters to evaluate um, whether or not ultimately it, it's a successful program, a pilot. So here are some of the metrics that staff have um, identified and developed that we are that we're presenting to the commission this evening. Um, of course, looking at the, the table in front of you here, um, generally we'll be looking at volume and queue that are then are as a result of the pilot, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. In order to install the bike lane, we do need to reduce the traveling down from two to one. So as, as a result of that, we want to make sure that we are uh, observing the queuing uh, that are that is the result of the, uh, the lane reduction, as well as some of the vehicular volume before and after the pilot program. Of course, given that it's a uh, a brand new facility for pit, for bicycle for bicyclists, we will also want to look at the before and after uh, of, of bicycle volume at this location, just to just to see um, the usage. Um, we, staff is also anticipating to develop a a public survey, an online survey, so that way everybody that uses the facility, um, not just around the area, but but also perhaps throughout the city will have an opportunity to go online and provide their feedback. We're hoping this will allow us to, to really cast the net wider um, than, than just some sort of your typical um, general users around the area. Also, it's a really good way for, for people that, um, that are using the facility to have an avenue to provide their feedback. And finally, we would like to look at the bicycle and pedestrian collisions as well. Um, again, we'll be doing a, a general comparison between the pre and the post pilot period. So with that being said, uh, quickly highlights a couple of the next steps that will be necessary to bring this project forward. Obviously, we're here tonight in front of you uh, looking for commission feedback, both on the pilot program itself, as well as some of the metrics that we have proposed. Um, definitely welcome any feedback that you that you might have. We'll then incorporate the, the, that feedback into a final recommendation, which we intend to present to the city council in the near future. So with that, I thank you for listening to my presentation and happy to answer any questions. Great, uh, thank you very much. And um, can you keep the, um, the measurements absolutely because uh, i think me um well i i guess um we'll, we'll we'll see what people have uh questions about so we'll start with uh commissioner questions and then um, move to public comment and then bring it back to the commission for uh, uh comments discussion and eventual motions and I see that there are uh, some commissioners with hands raised. Commissioner Lee. So I have some um, feedback on the overall plan, which I, I think should we should wait to the discussion period. But I have a very specific question, too, about um, one part of the roadway, which is um, if we can go back to the map, Kevin, that shows sure. the whole thing. That would be helpful. Okay, so right now I know that the yellow bar, the yellow bar is like this is the area that we're talking about. But right to the to the west of the yellow bar, mm -hmm. I see right now we just have um, Sharrows 
for um, for directing for that mingling of car and bike traffic. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, and this has probably been brought up before, but is there room for a pocket bike lane crossing El Camino for bicyclists right now? Because right now there's like three lanes, right? There's a right-hand turn lane, there's two left-hand and a through lane, and then is there room for a pocket bike lane in, in that mix or no? I apologize, can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. I can hear you. Sorry, um, yeah, sorry Commissioner Lee, uh, you, your comment got cut out by- Oh, it got cut out, I'm bit, so sorry. That, that's okay, I think I, I understood your question. I think you were asking about sort of the the Sheros on the westbound direction kind of through the Alma Street, if you will. And, and I think the answer is definitely, we'll have an opportunity to kind of explore that area. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, because of the fact that um, that we are reducing one of the travel lanes, there'll be, we'll be able to kind of further improve not only the, um, the section that, that is through the intersection, but potentially beyond that, all the way to Merrill. So those will be part of the incorporation that we can do here. Uh, because again, we, we can kind of, at this between Elma and Merrill, we can add a bike lane in there by simply shifting some of the travel lanes uh, without further impacting um, the capacity. But to answer your question though, yes, that will be definitely be able to, um, you know, take away the shares, if you will, and maybe right. put in some dash dash lines down there in the case of bike lane. Got it. So theoretically, one could, instead of seeing the shares there, you could have like a dotted or striped bike lane crossing Alma, continuing through to Merrill and possibly a pocket bike lane to El, crossing El Camino? I, 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 would, I would say from Merrill to El Camino would be much trickier. Um, okay. I would say as part of this pilot, I, what I can sort of say right now would be part of the pilot, certainly to Alma, mm -hmm. certainly through the track, even to Merrill. Okay. Beyond Merrill though, I, I believe there will mm. be a lot more um, civil work necessary if we want to ultimately have a bike lane in there, which would mm -hmm. obviously not be part of this pilot program. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that helps. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks. And so um, moving on to Commissioner Seabrand. <clears throat> thanks. I think my one just question was the metric about the bicycle pedestrian collisions. Um, like, have, have, have there been any, I mean, do we, there, I assume we have some kind of a base. We know how many there have been in that area already. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and we would basically extract the previous data. Um, we, we don't have data up to today yet, but we do have the historic data available at this location. So the idea would be, um, six months from now or nine months from now, we would have data up to today. Uh, that becomes sort of a pre-pilot condition. And then we'll use the through the, um, ideally through the entire pilot per period plus a couple of months after that would be considered sort of the post-pilot view. Thanks. All right, um, Commissioner Bruzzi. Um yeah, so my question is really about, um, I was um, I was going back, former Commissioner John Weiner um, had sent me, um, just to refresh my memory, um, some of the counts that, that we had earlier of bikes, pedestrians, and vehicles going in all these different directions. And um, it's not lost on me that, that there's a really heavy um, pedestrian usage at this intersection, um, particularly crossing the intersection. And I'd like to know, um, like to me, that frankly seems like the bigger problem to solve. And I wanna know what impact these changes would have, positive, negative, neutral, on people trying to cross at that intersection and what kinds of safety ideas you might've considered for pedestrians and frankly, people on bikes, right? Because there are a lot of people from the train station who use that crossing as well. I'd love to hear from staff a little bit more about your considerations there. Um, 
I mean, yeah, no, that, that's definitely a great question. I think with, with at least with this pilot program, one of the advantage that we would have would be we can repurpose a certain amount of the, that second travel lane, if you will, on the westbound direction into the median. So as far as uh, the center median is concerned, there is an opportunity to make it wider. Uh, if you've been out there in the past, Right now, it's really kind of a six-inch curve, if you will. So not a lot of refuge item room, if you will. So with the pilot, we can certainly expand that um, just on the sheer uh, fact that we have more room to work with. Um, of course, if the pilot is to be uh, deemed successful and become a permanent feature, that island will stay. We would design it in such a way where we can expand that median. Um, and, and of course, then we can um, have a, a wider refuge island as part of the kind of that permanent feature, if you will. Um, so that, that would be one consideration. Uh, the second consideration would be looking into the, the bike circulation. Um, uh, as you mentioned, we can certainly reconfigure the island, particularly the one crossing through Alma to create some openings for the bike bikers as well as they kind of cross Alma Street. So those are opportunities that we can look into as part of this pilot design. Um, can I ask a sort of out there question? Um, I think I might've raised this with some, one of you earlier, but um, when I was going back through old almanacs, um, I noticed that there was a point when a um, sort of earlier edition of public works staff um, had actually thought that a traffic signal at this intersection was gonna be the best solution to the crossing the intersection safely. That of course was before you'd removed the left hand and through traffic um, on Alma. But I'm wondering, um, you know, at some point somebody who was a transportation engineer thought that that was a viable idea. And I'm wondering if, especially given the quiet zone that we're talking about as a city, um, if that's something that you'd considered at all um, and what the impacts of that might be. Right, yeah, um, that's that's another great observation right there. I, I will say it, it, one one point that you hit on with regard to kind of signalizing the location is the fact that it was previously sort of a um, a, a, a standard intersection, if you will. Um, cars can make a left if you're coming on, on if you're on Elma Street making a left onto Ravenswood from both directions. So given kind of that operation, certainly the signal makes a lot of sense, even from a safety standpoint. With the current configuration, with Alma being essentially kind of right in, right out configuration only, um, a, si a signal is certainly still a viable option. However, from a cost benefit standpoint, that is something that we'll have to evaluate uh, a little bit further. I, I know that is something that we have um, looked into in the past, there are a couple of drawbacks. Um, you know, one is obviously just kind of the financial aspect of installing a signal uh, relative to uh, the, its, useful, its useful life uh, relative to the Great Separation Project. Uh, the other thing would be um, sort of the control at the signal relative to El Camino and then the train track as well. Um, I believe we have looked into in the past, the, um, the distance at this location to El Camino is far enough where uh, the coordination will be a little bit trickier uh, to handle as well. So those are things that have factored into previous considerations, but it's something that we constantly evaluate um, and I would be more than happy to, to do so again. Okay, um, so seeing no other hands from fellow commissioners, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions um, first, I'm going to build on what uh, the previous questions about the pedestrian experience and just want to ask a follow on about um, so I'm seeing in this picture the um, uh, the additional crosswalk on the uh, Palo Alto words side of the uh, El Camino. Uh, um, and let's see this out. Um, 
so when is there going to be the extra leg of the El Camino cro uh, crosswalk put in and what is the timing of that um, with relation to the timing of this project? Are, are you referring to the El Camino and Ravenswood crosswalk? Yes. That, that, that missing. Yeah, the missing one. Um, gotcha, gotcha. My understanding is that the missing ones are slated to go in at some point in the planable future. And I was wondering what that timing was with relationship to the repaving. Gotcha. Yep. So, so right now we are coordinating both projects very closely, given, given their close proximity. In terms of the scope for that project, so which is the kind of that crosswalk for El Camino, we are currently, uh, we have a consultant on board to do the analysis and design. I believe that particular project will be kicking off relatively soon. Um, of course, all of the subsequent analysis and, um, and designs will, will have to proceed in order for that project to, to be constructed. And also, as many of you might notice, it is a Caltrans intersection, so it makes the process a little bit more difficult and lengthier. So there, I, I would say from a kind of timeline standpoint, it is very likely that the resurfacing project would go in first before the curb ramp. However, um, we're, we're constantly monitoring both projects to see if there's any way we can you know, streamline the process a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay, because while uh, looking at that and thinking about that, um, one of the safety problems with that intersection is and I don't I don't know about like how much it has to do with the turning radius and how much it has to do with visibility and drivers not looking for pedestrians but drivers heading on uh, El Camino uh, heading on El Camino in the Redwood City direction and then making a right toward the train tracks frequently do not look for pedestrians and almost run over pedestrians who are uh, crossing over toward in the Cafe Baroni direction. And so in the spirit of thinking about safety improvements and either permanent or pilot treatments, I would encourage the staff team to look at that dimension of the project because that's a pedestrian safety problem right there. Um, the other question that I had was with regard to the pilot period. And I see that um, staff is recommending a pilot period of six months, which is generally a good amount of time for a pilot. Um, I was wondering if staff had given any thought to a different and possibly longer pilot period given the uh, you know, pandemic change and um, you know, potential uh, return to office work from some offices that had had less office work and whether it might, wh whether um, staff has considered a longer pilot given the changing travel patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's certainly uh, another great question there. And of course, with tonight's meeting, if the commission collectively believes that we should extend the uh, pilot period, by all means, that could be one of the, the recommendations. Uh, it is something that staff will continue to monitor. Um, as I mentioned before, six, month, six months is sort of you know, fairly typical pilot uh, duration, if you will. Um, but certainly, there have been times where we extend the pilot period, um, giving various reasons. So that, that is certainly not something that is sort of set in stone, if you will. We'll be able to um, monitor that as, as the, for, the, for that first six months. And if there are reasons that we believe we should extend that, we can certainly um, uh, do so as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I see that um, uh, Commissioner Cole has a hand and then Commissioner Altman. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Levin. Um, when would the six month pilot begin? What would be the begin month? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So our goal here is for the resurfacing project to take place first. So they would be resurfacing the street. So um, to some extent we are sort of, uh, the schedule is dictated by that particular effort. 
uh, we are, we're coordinating with the CIP team to see what their schedule is. Um, and, and then because it, at, the, at this moment in time, there is, um, a, because, of, if, because of the fact that the scope has been revised, they do need to look into the design of this particular section as well. So there will be some design time necessary. Um, of course, that impacts the construction time. So we're working with them on this. We're hoping to have everything done, um, at least the resurfacing job by this year, uh, but don't quote me on that. Thank you. I'm Commissioner Altman. Yeah, what, what's the procedure by which you determine who to survey? How does that done? Yeah, but that's a great question. And so in this case, what we're hoping for is that we'll be able to cast a wider net with this online feature. Uh, so, you know, obviously anyone that's interested in providing the feedback. So I, I you know, obviously the people that are driving on Ravenswood um, that are experiencing this firsthand, people that are biking on Ravenswood, uh, maybe even people that are in a nearby area and just having some observations. I, I guess anyone is welcome to, to take that survey um, if they have firsthand or even secondhand experience. On the city side, we'll do our best to let the words out, of course, hoping the commission will be one of the uh, broadcasting venues of, of letting people know that the survey is available, is online for people to, to, to take and provide their feedback. So we're hoping to kind of um, really let the words out about the survey. Um, let's see. So are there any other commissioners who have questions? And if not, um, we'll uh, move to public comment and um, we'll take uh, public comment um, for uh, up to three minutes. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, Ken, Ken Kirshner, um, feel free to give public comment. Yes, and I'd just like to add for anyone who might have joined us uh, a bit late, if you'd like to make a public comment, just raise your virtual hand or press star nine if you're calling in. But Ken, you are now the public speaker. Uh, thank you. Um, with regard to the Ravenswood proposal, I have uh, three comments or points to, to ask about. The first one is, will the metrics being collected support a VMT measurement. Uh, it seems like they will support a level of service measurement, but I'm concerned that that's the wrong priority and that VMT should be the priority. Um, second point is I'm curious about the lane width in that westbound travel lane, how wide it will be and what the resulting speed is likely to be, narrow lanes being preferred. And the third point is I'm curious about what kind of outreach there will be to the biking community to make them aware of this improvement in the infrastructure uh, as a way of measuring uptake. Thank you. All right, uh, uh, thank you for those uh, really good questions. And um, let me uh, uh, ask staff to address the questions from the member of the public. Um, first of all, in terms of the um, uh, uh, vehicle miles traveled, and um, you know, the, the in terms of the use by uh, cyclists and pedestrians, um, is that a tractable thing? Um, uh, can can staff make a comment about the the VMT question? Yeah, no, that definitely. Um, so, one of the one of the the reasoning behind at least looking at the queuing and, and volumes, particularly vehicle vehicle volumes on um, Ravenswood and, and Oak Grove, it, it's really for us to 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 assess the circulation around this area as a result of that re lane reduction. So while um, Mr. Kirshner is right that. You know, it might, it might seem like it's more geared toward level of service, and in a way it is. It, it, it will allow us to look at um, the, the circulation, whether or not there's a change in pattern around the area. It will be much more difficult to, to really quantify VMT, obviously, because of um, so, so that, that trickling down effect. Um, for, for example, if you are driving down Ravenswood, 
um, and, and now you no longer desire that route, you, you'd rather go to Oak Grove. You know, some of, some of the pattern changes are fairly, fairly minor. Uh, but one of the things that we will be looking, that we can look into is based on the observation that we see in terms of the circulation itself, at least from a high level, uh, conclude whether or not there's a, a VMT, um, either increase in VMT or, or a reduction in VMT or, or perhaps staying the same. Of course, all of, all of this is going to be fairly high level. Uh, it's going to be somewhat hard to, to measure the exact change of VMT given the, the slight the, the, the scope area in this case. Uh, in terms of the length, we'll definitely consider that as part of the design. It, currently, the westbound direction does have a um, serve, it does service buses. Uh, of course, if we go down to one lane, it will certainly service uh, emergency vehicles, uh, larger vehicles such as the, uh, garbage trucks, et cetera. So we need to take that into account. Um, and, and of course, I think sort of the current practice, if you will, it is to reduce the, the language to, to sort of the minimum that can accommodate those, those larger vehicles. So we'll certainly take that into, into account uh, when we're doing the design uh, for the pilot program. In terms of the outreach, we'll definitely uh, use all avenues available to the city just to broadcast the word out about this pilot program. Of course, the commissioners will definitely welcome you to spread the word with your neighbors and organizations that, that you have affiliations with. But on our end, we'll be using all the all the city avenue available to us to to make to make everyone aware of this uh, pilot program that will be coming. Mm -hmm. um, and and can you remind us when the developments on El Camino are going to um, open up the um, there's the the two of them on this side and and that side. Right, so we have 1,300 El Camino to the north side, if you will, 500 on the south side. Um, my understanding is that they're both still under construction. Um, I, I actually don't have the exact timeline that they will be occupied. I believe for 1,300, at least some of the, uh, the buildings will get occupied by um, later this year. Uh, and for 500, I, I do not have the information at the moment in time, but I'd be happy to get that offline and share that with the commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think I might have some comments relating to that, but um, we'll uh, comment later. Um, do commission members have comments on this proposal from staff? I see several so far, uh, Commissioner Baruzzi. Um, okay, I'm going to try to be compact here. Um, so when I look at the, the database, the Switters database, the state accident data um, that I like to frequently reference, um, this, uh, according, if I look at, if I search for bike and pedestrian accidents in the city of Menlo Park during the time frame when this database is available, this is the number one intersection in the city for bike pet accidents. Um, within 200 feet of this intersection. Um, so I just, I, and, and most of, some of those are just a bike was riding along and fell off. Like, I, I mean, like some of them, some of them are random, but some of them are these kinds of things that we're worried about, you know, people in a crosswalk or people getting right hooked there. It's about turning and crossing, not necessarily about going straight. Um, so I, um, whenever I think about this intersection, that's really what I think about. I'll also comment that after our last meeting, um, Actually, I think you and I, Commissioner Levin, were talking about how we kind of missed an opportunity on the El Camino Real middle intersection to talk um, more fully about the overall, the bigger vision for circulation in this area and how it's likely to change when new developments open up. Um, we talked about that in the M2 recently. We're going to probably want to talk about it with Willow Road. Um, and, and I really want to see us thinking about that here because if you look at a map and you think about what's going to change in this area real soon, um, Springline is going to be opening up and they're going to have residents and people from Springline ostensibly like to use the library, the pool, et cetera. And I'm going to guess that some of them are going to want to come down. Well, they can't come down Merrill because that's sort of a dead end. They're going to want to come down Alma potentially and access some of our civic center opportunities in the park. 
Um, so I would expect um, that crosswalk to get even more usage. And then people from Limfield Oaks and other places are gonna wanna go access Springline with the fancy restaurants. Um, that will be a nice change. So, so I would really love us to be, um, I, like, I think this is great that we're thinking about an additional bike lane here. I don't ever wanna be a person arguing against a bike lane, but um, when I looked at the metrics, here's what gave me pause. Um, it's just adding another leg of a lane that's still not complete because what happens is sometime between the train tracks and El Camino or beyond El Camino, it ends. So I don't see um, people who are already biking on Ravenswood, I think will feel a little bit more comfortable for a little bit longer, but they're still ultimately going to have to do something, ride amid traffic without a bike lane if they cross El Camino and are riding on Menlo, or if they continue to El Camino and then take a right <laughs> or left, right, 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 right now we don't have bike lanes in any of those other places. So I don't expect this to actually draw a significant number of new cyclists. I don't think there's a high demand for that one block between Noel and, and Alma that there was before. Like, I don't, I don't think there's, the, I don't think this is untapped demand in our city. I think there probably is untapped demand for people who want to see a safer route all the way along from El, from from Menlo Atherton High School to Drakers, that I that I strongly believe exists, um, and I can support this and vote for this. But what I really want to see from um, staff is as a plan for this area and for people crossing Oak Grove and Ravenswood safely, um, because they're going to the train station, because they're going to the library, because they're going to the gym. Um, I just think that is that is so critical, and and we have you know we have kids doing this on bikes, on their way to school, like in droves. Um, so I, I mean, I, I'm eager to see where other people are, but I, but I really, um, yay for more pedestrian refuge, yay for lane reduction if it gets us a wider median. Um, but I would spend more time thinking about that conundrum before I would spend time adding a little, sh a little, a little bit onto a bike lane that we know needs to be extended, but it's kind of hard to figure out how. That's what I got. Uh, okay, uh, Commissioner Lee. Yeah, I wonder if we could go back to the map, Kevin. Is it possible? Sorry, yeah, definitely. Give me one second. Okay. There we go. So, so the last time this came in front of us, I remember um, Jackie was also bringing this up because um, as a bicyclist, I mean, first of all, I, I totally agree with what, what, what Katie was talking about. That was what kind of triggered my comment about how do we get people across El Camino? You know, is there a way to um, mitigate that confusion when you the bike lane disappears, basically, right? So right now, the benefit of having you, as much as it is great to think about reducing, you know, um, reducing the width for pedestrians and putting in a bike lane, um, because it is very rude when it suddenly, it feels very rude when it suddenly drops off at Noel, you're like, what the heck, right? I mean, it just, it just feels like a little bit of a slap in the face. Um, the advantage of having two through lanes right now is that everybody who wants to turn left kind of shuttles off to the left one. And then so the right lane, if you're crossing, you have a relatively comfortable, traffic-free experience trying to get through. So now if everyone's sort of shuffled into one <coughs> lane, then right when the bike, when, when the bike lane ends at, let's say, even if you were to cross, even if you're crossing Alma there, you have dotted lines going across Alma you then suddenly, you know, now you're mingling and you're trying to get through those three, find your way as a bicyclist, um, you know, in the middle of cars who are also trying to find their way into th to sort themselves into three different lanes, right? So I, you know, again, you know, more bike lane being better than less bike lane, but I don't know. I, I, I am kind of trying to, I'm struggling with the idea of like, as a bicyclist, I know the closer I get to the train tracks into El Camino, the more scary it becomes because you feel very exposed out there, right? You've got like, it's all, it's very open all of a sudden. So you're suddenly in the midst of these intersections where you don't really know what to do, right? You kind, I mean, you can figure it out, but it's a lot of stuff to be confronted with all of a sudden, especially if you're not totally 100% comfortable with biking in the middle of traffic, right? It's a lot. 
uh, again, I think I agree with Katie that we're not necessarily going to win over more people. People who maybe are already comfortable with this will be able to deal with the, the new changes. But, you know, I am just thinking that it is a little safer to, for me as a bicyclist, it does feel a little safer to be like, okay, I know I'm already mingling now before it gets to this big wide open intersection area with the train tracks. Like there's just a lot of decision points that you have and possible points of conflict once you get past, you know, once you reach Alma, Alma proper, not Alma Lane, once you reach that area, there's just so many more points of possible collision that it becomes scary. So I'd be interested to see what Jackie has to say about this again and what other people are thinking about. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so uh, Commissioner Seabrand. Thanks. Um, I like yes to everything that Lydia just said. And um, Katie also, there's a lot, I've been um, giving me a lot to think about. Um, I, so really what Lydia said, I think a lot about what happens right there off the map. Um, we rode tonight down there just to kind of, uh, well, to go pick up dinner. And I used it as a nice research opportunity because I went there and back at a different time of day. Um, and what, frankly, it's the part between the railroad tracks and Alma that is like, that part's a little, um, it's that what happens off the map when all those lanes of cars all try to figure out where they're going where right now to lydia's point they all neatly divide however with um all my extra increased days of riding that section i will also say that when that bike lane disappears and it becomes a sharrow it is an interesting thing between cars and bikes there and I regularly have cars like they want that space in the lane and they are not understanding that like we share. So that stretch actually is a little bit hairy sometimes during commute when everybody wants to get where they want to get and they will like gun the motor so that they can be in front of you there, like in, so they can be in the lane and not behind the bike. Um, and so I do see that between Noah, that right there where the bike lane ends, that is an area of conflict right now. Um, with, I mean, not like conflict, conflict, but you know, that is a, an area I can see would be improved by a clear bike lane um, and then not having to jockey for traffic. It is, I, I think the paint thing on the other side of what's off the map here is gonna be critical to helping make sure that um, everybody gets where they need to get um safely uh but otherwise like i i i can totally get behind a pilot to see how this goes because um it could be that with paint people that it, it that it is okay that's really disjointed feedback sorry all right um cool thanks um commissioner cole thank you um well i just wanted to agree with what Commissioner Superian said, um, I go back and forth to Burgess Park a lot, and as a driver anyway, I definitely see in this area on that westbound side, um, this sort of jockeying, you know, between bikes and cars. So I'm inclined to support the pilot. Um, and also it's near um, Menlo Atherton High School. We know that kids bike a lot uh, to and from on this road. So, but the one thing that I was interested when Lydia was speaking, um, Commissioner Lee was, if there is this sense, and I see it as well as, as a driver here, um, that it's it's actually the area that we're not seeing on the map, you know, between Alma and El Camino that gets really hairy for bicyclists. Um, has that been on the agenda or um, either previously or anticipated to be for the commission to discuss or take a look at? And if it hasn't been, I'm actually thinking that the pilot might be one way to springboard onto that discussion and to focus and sort out that in a way that works better than it does currently, that area. So Kevin, is that something in the past that the commission has tackled that kind of train tracks to El Camino section here of Ravenswood? Sorry, excuse me, I forgot that I muted myself. So, um, the, the the short answer to your question, first of all, 
for the first one is that no, we have not looked at it extensively. Um, with that being said, you, 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 both you and uh, Commissioner Sibrian brought up a good point, which is what can we use this pilot opportunity? If we can use this pilot opportunity to, to essentially carry that forward uh, past the train track, and which I, um, I believe there is one, um, as especially particularly given that based on our preliminary evaluation, uh, the section between Alma through the train track all the way up to uh, Merrill, we can physically fit, we can potentially fit a bike lane in there without changing the lane configuration. So what that means is we um, essentially would be able to carry those, carry that bike lane through the track all the way up to Merrill. And at, at that point, the, the left turn cars are, are essentially delineated. So it, it, it really, it does, uh, one of the benefits that we are will be seeing potentially is that the bikers, as they approach El Camino, um, certainly they would still have to, um, you know, find position themselves nicely. But at that point, you are really uh, merging with the vehicles that are either going through, continue on to Menlo, or you're making a right onto um, El Camino Real. So we certainly would be able to reduce. Uh, quite a bit of traffic at that point. Um, so the, the conflict point, we, uh, we are now essentially taking away that left turning volumes out of the picture. So it will be, uh, in, in my opinion, a benefit um, just by the sheer fact that we're reducing the amount of vehicles away from that conflict point. So that is something we'll be exploring as part of the pilot. Uh, so that's a long, long, long answer to your question. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Sebrin, is that a new hand? It is a new hand, actually, because I realized that I first wanted to say thank you to staff for like listening to the concerns we had last time and coming back with a model that um, tries to talk about some of the things we were concerned about. And then I felt a little bad because the first thing I did was like, well, can we talk about what's not on the map? Um, so anyway, thank you to staff for trying to like work through some of these concerns. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I'll um, put myself in the queue here, which is um, building on what Commissioner Sebian said and expressing like quite a lot of thanks to staff for coming forward with this approach because the, um, like in the previous time that we, we talked about it, um, there was uh, concern about the, um, you know, uh, 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 driving and previous traffic pattern. And so doing this as a pilot seems like just a really fantastic opportunity to test out and see you know does this work with a really good balance of improving safety of uh, people um, uh, bicycling people who are going to be walking with the extra crosswalks and um, people driving so i i love this pilot and i uh, want to express great thanks to whoever it is at staff to whom this creativity is due um, uh, with, with that, um, I, uh, would, um, be, because there's going to be a number of different things changing, including more people, um, walking in this area with the new developments and possibly bicycling and, um, you know, changing, changing travel patterns, um, you know, the option to extend the pilot if we think that things are continuing to change and we don't know enough uh, yet. So I, I, I think that would be a good thing to um, consider. Um, I really like um, what several people have been saying in terms of like from our lesson from the Jefferson Constitution area to look at an area that's undergoing change with, um, you know, looking at the pedestrian flow and, and like more of the holistic uh, pedestrian and, and bicycle circulation. And I wanna like make a comment and then ask staff, because it seems to me that there are several different opportunities to keep 
um, you know how like when you when you have a, a, a canvas and you do a sketch and then you add some colors and then you add some more lines, there's going to be more than one um, pass through on this canvas. So I think one of them is this pilot that the next one is going to be with the crosswalks. Um, and then there's going to be another with the SRI development where these intersections are may, are going to be within the broader purview of that development too, where there might be some uh, transportation impact dollars to improve the circulation um, within the purview of that development too. So would want to ask staff how they would want to do like wh what kind of in incremental and holistic view would staff like to do to look for continuous opportunities to improve the circulation of the area um you know not just like this one stretch of extra lines and, and staff make a uh, respond to that um general thought yeah yeah certainly and and i think when it comes to to circulation as, as the chair mentioned it, it uh it's, it's obviously much better if we can take a take a step back and looking at the the, the, the whole area holistically um it's certainly sometimes sometimes we do lack that opportunity uh and i, I would say you know with this pilot it, it will be kind of the especially doing the the post data collection period, that, that is certainly something that we're looking to, uh, as, as I mentioned in the, uh, the metric, that we'll not only will we collect um, data on Ravenswood, but we'd also do so at Oak Grove just to, to get a ballpark of sort of the circulation change, if you will, um, if, if, if it does change uh, as part of this result. Um, I would say probably as part of the SRI, uh, development there will be another opportunity to to re-examine this but certainly there will be a uh, transportation impact analysis associated with that as well um there and and, and of course uh, as as many other things um once we have a if we have a project that's nearby that gives that affords us the opportunity to look at the circulation around the area that's usually something that we'll we'll just go ahead and, and do so um as well so Certainly, um, you know, when it comes to kind of the, the whole area, the, the bigger it gets, obviously, the more difficult um, and more data intensive um, it gets as well. But those are always opportunities that we look for um, whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thanks. And I'm going to make one more comment and then uh, hand it to Commissioner Baruzzi and then start to ask for motions. Um, so wanted to, uh, in, in true confessions mode, um, I uh, ride that intersection on a bicycle not infrequently. And the piece that goes past the railroad tracks to El Camino, um, I often take a bicycle through the, um, the, the plaza by the area that like was the furniture store and then um, use the pedestrian light to cross the street so as not to have to uh, handle that intersection with, with cars. So um, I, I think, um, uh, and anyway, so when, when people were like, uh, like speculating about how people handle the challenge of that with the with a, with a bicycle, that's what I sometimes do. I punt. Um, uh, Commissioner Baruzzi. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to mention while you're looking at this area before I forget. Um, so so the, 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 that um, eastbound bike lane between El Camino and Alma on Ravenswood is actually you know, there's paint on the ground, um, but it's kind of sketchy. I think because of the way the road curves and drivers sort of anticipating, worrying about the train tracks and maybe they're gonna turn right on Alma, maybe they're not. And there's that bump that they're trying to avoid. Thanks for fixing that, by the way. Um, so, so basically I've had many times, you know, to be like kind of verbal and vocal to remind drivers that like, here I am in this bike lane parallel to you and like, please don't like swerve into me. Um, 
So I would I would ask that you know if as you're thinking about this this area and you're in, you know before we encourage too many more people to ride there like some of, some of these things for even people who can can suddenly go to 20 miles an hour and get themselves out and are very super situationally aware like it's still not super comfortable and and so just please think about that. But then I actually I'm just curious because I'm looking at I'm looking at this weird block where we're going to have how many new apartments are coming online at Springline. Do you know, I, I do not, but I can like pull it up. Really. 200, 300, it's a lot, right? It's a, yes, uh, it's, it's in the hundreds. The two, two buildings that, that would have apartments. So, so, yeah. so here's the thing I, I actually honestly don't know how, if they were, it's a, it's not people who like to walk can do the 20 minute walk down to the pool or whatever. But if you want to get on a bike and ride, I guess you can, I guess you could just do Oak Grove to Laurel and it's fine. But if you were trying to go to the library, um, do we have we been thinking about how people are getting across Oak Grove and, and how much Alma Street that segment of Alma Street between Ravenswood and Oak Grove is likely to have additional traffic like are you thinking about any about changes to that at all before those apartments open up I really I really hope you do um yep. I just um because the whole point of like having really dense housing near transit and near downtown and near services is that it, people shouldn't have to get in a car to go somewhere that's within a half mile radius. Um, and so right now, because like, there's this weirdness where Merrill Street kind of dead ends and you can only go one way um, into Ravenswood, um, there just there aren't that many options there. Um, so I think it'll be a more attractive area if we can figure out that safety. And this again is why, I know why we closed off the Alma intersection, um, but you know, is it time to talk about potentially reconsider? I don't know. And just throwing that out there as a one card, and then I'll stop talking while I'm ahead before everybody gets upset. <laughs> I just, I would, I would really, I would really love you to think holistically about about this this weird this this area with all the new people coming in. And how we can just make that anticipate their needs and make it safer for them. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. uh, cool. Uh, just, just staff have any any comments on that before I uh, turn to the commission and ask for motions. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and definitely appreciate Commissioner Peruzzi's comments. Um, definitely, there will be an opportunity with the resurfacing for us to to look at the eastbound direction between El Camino and Elma again, to maybe strengthen, highlight some of the, um, the conflict areas, if you will. Um, we, we will be taking a look at uh, Elma and um, specifically the crossing of Ravenswood along Elma uh, as part of this assessment. We're, we're, so that, that certainly is currently on our table uh, with regard to kind of as you're traveling up, um, I, I think one of the activities that we see is that some of the kids that, that ultimately would go to Santa Cruz that are traveling on Ravenswood would then use Merrill as their way to get to Santa Cruz. That is certainly an observation that I have made myself. So this certainly, I think would certainly help that circulation, if you will. Um, and, then, and then also in terms of Merrill, I, I think at, at least at Oak Grove, one of the, the benefits is that we just recently approved uh, the left turn restriction um, so in terms of, you know, vehicular circulation, uh, that certainly will kind of channelize those, mer those cars that are driving along Santa Cruz up to Merrill that potentially they're making um, that right turn. So, so I, think, I think those are er definitely areas of, um, of importance. And then there are definitely areas that we'll be looking into as part of this pilot. So, so certainly um, recognize that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Um, uh, are there any, um, uh, Commissioner Baruzzi, is that a new hand? All right. Um, do any commissioners have motions? Uh, Commissioner Cole. I move to approve the pilot, the six month pilot as proposed by the staff. Are there any seconds? I'll second it. All right, that was a second to 
Sibirin, um, any uh, discussion about the motion, if you have uh, uh, any, anything to discuss. Um, um, I'm just curious um, if the pilot can include more of a pedestrian refuge as part of what you're trying to do. Like, is there, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little spacey right now, but I feel like we talked about that being a possibility. Um, and I, I think that um, among other things, it heightens the visibility of there being people who might be crossing here. I will say too, I realized after I spoke last time that this does reduce travel lanes, which means there's one less lane of variably paying attention cars for pedestrians to have to deal with. So that actually is a pretty significant improvement from a pedestrian standpoint. Like having to deal with one lane of cars coming at you instead of two where one stops and the other doesn't see it is better. So, so I appreciate that. Um, but I would love to see, I, I, don't, I mean, I, I could vote for this, but I'd like to see a little bit more of a robust um, landing pad for somebody who's crossing the street, if that's possible, if that's feasible with the lane reduction that we're piloting. Yeah, no, that, definitely. Uh, that is something that we're looking to. So as I mentioned before, um, because of the fact that we are reducing the travel lane from two to one, that, that one travel lane would essentially be going towards uh, both the bike lane and the possibility of widening that medium. Um, so, so at least for the duration of the pilot, we'll be able to expand that, um, that median um, as a result of that. And then subsequently, when, however about the outcome of the pilot, then, then obviously we'll design accordingly as well. But yes, to answer your question, we, we will be able to expand that, that island um, probably quite, quite a bit wider than it is now. Oh, great. So in that case, I'm hoping that in the metrics that you'll include, sorry to get really, really um, micro here, um, a, a sort of a pedestrian comfort. Um, a lot of the people who cross that, cross it regularly because they take a train to work every day or something like that. Um, I've seen you doing that on occasion. Um, so, so maybe if there's a way to act, to get to get a sense from pedestrians of these changes, or, or from people crossing at that intersection, some of whom might be pedestrians, some of whom might be on bikes, um, if this if this is enhancing their experience, making it better, making it worse, no difference. That would be useful, I think, as a metric. Yeah, no, that that's a great feedback, and we should be able to do that through the online survey. We can really pose that as a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. We could even do maybe procession intercept surveys or anything. I mean, is that like a thing? Because it, it's like there are like 150 people in an hour in the morning and in the evening who use this this crossing. Mm -hmm. um, it's very. I mean, I, people use it all day long, but there's there are times of day when it's really really heavy. Um, so, um, yeah, it seems like doing some on-site surveying might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Uh, if if the if the commission as a whole would like to add that as a you know friendly amendment to to the um to the motion that is certainly something that we can take and then add add that on to um obviously we we'll want to talk about kind of how to procedurally get at that all done but we should be able to kind of come to a conclusion and sure Cole would you accept that as a friendly amendment which, um which, which of the things would need to go in as an amendment versus that as advice to staff which things do we need as an amendment um, question for staff before asking the maker of the motion. Definitely. I, I, I would say the, the part where uh, Commissioner Bruzzi is talking about so maybe some um, you know, on-site on survey, uh, because we do currently have the online survey, so we can, we can you know, the, the content of that survey is, is certainly something that doesn't have to be a part of the amendment, but I think it would be nice to have uh, the part where the commission is asking for um, you know, some additional on-site survey specifically geared toward the pedestrian. I mean, if it's not too expensive, I want to say a lot of the people who use that crossing, especially people coming to them from the train, are not necessarily Menlo Park residents, yep. and they're not necessarily going to be scooped up in whatever normal mechanisms via next door, et cetera, you have for your surveys. So I just think mm -hmm. like if we want to get if we want to get those folks, that's one way to do it. Or I would ask that you come up with another way to do the same thing that, you know, work with SRI, et cetera. But I think like that, I think getting that tranche of people who frequently use the intersection but may not be Menlo Park residents would be really important. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. 
Uh, um, so, uh, Commissioner Cole, would would you be amenable to that as an amendment to do the um, uh, on, on site research in addition to a web survey? I would, yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Um, I have a, a, a question about to, to staff about whether it would be needed to be made as an amendment or just something that staff will do as a matter of course um, to consider extending the pilot if it seems like there are conditions that are continuing to change like like at the six month period um to like want to do another batch of months yeah no that definitely as i mentioned before that is certainly something that will will collectively just go ahead and do anyway so i i don't think that is necessary to be part of the um the, the motion um also additionally we'll, we'll document that as part of the minute so there'll be record record of uh, of that statement coming from the commission as well. But I, I don't I don't see a need to to add that as a part of the motion. Okay. Um, and um, I there I saw a fugitive hand that came and went. Um, so if there do do um, actually do, do any fellow commissioners think that it would be a good idea to have as part of the motion about like considering a longer pilot if we need it. And the reason why I would think about doing it that way is that um, like, like pr previously there was some anxiety expressed about like, is this gonna work? So I think if we write it down, that will make it clear that we are thinking about like just wanting to make sure or, or if, like if, if 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 others are not worried and and you know like like I trust that staff will do the right thing on this anyway, um, but um, uh, Commissioner Cole, I'm just curious, Adina. I'm sorry, um, Chair Levin. How would you phrase that to add it to the motion? One um, of the, just sorry, very quickly. P.S. Is that one of the reasons I like the idea about potentially extending it if needed? Is that since like kids biking from school would become familiar i mean they're not reading that there's a pilot right but become familiar there's a bike lane there it would be weird like in the middle of the school year to just sort of stop it in my opinion okay um so then you can you can say with um you know um uh, uh op optional extension okay um, yeah then, then then i think that makes it makes it clear that we're cognizant of the fact that that conditions are changing. Okay. Um, okay. Um, great. So we have a motion. We have a second. We have a couple of friendly amendments. Um, any other comments before we vote? If not, uh, can staff help us vote? Uh, great. So just uh, logistically, I know the uh, maker of the motion is comfortable with the two amendments. I just want to make sure that the seconder, which would be Commissioner Silverian, is also comfortable with that. Okay, great. So I get an affirmative vote there. So in that case, um, for those commissioners that would like to vote uh, yes to the motion on the table, if you can raise your hand and just hold it up for a couple of seconds here. Uh, I am seeing hands. Uh, Commissioner Cromie. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not seeing a hand from Commissioner Cromie, so I just want to give him a second. I know this at this point. Um, okay, so I, I guess we'll we'll affirmative vote for for everyone for now. Thank you, and then uh, uh, oh, Commissioner Cromie, do you, do you have a? Oh, there you go. I think I see a hand. Sorry, right. sorry that that was a. I, I had to do some uh, emergency parenting there for a second. I uh, understood. Understood. I think that's a, a an affirmative vote. So that's unanimous vote. So thank you very much. Was it an affirmative vote? You froze. It, it was an it was an affirmative vote to whatever we agree upon and any friendly amendments. Uh, I apologize, my internet is freaking out, and um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I don't even know if we voted yet because I had to do some parenting. I apologize. Okay, we 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 voted, and it sounds like you voted yes, and so we are unanimously in favor of the. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Great. Um, thank you. All right. Uh, great. Um, so moving on, um, the next item on the agenda is um, to 
uh, recommend to city council the preferred complete streets commission member count uh, where staff will introduce this item. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no formal presentation from staff, uh, just uh, provide a couple of remarks. Um, this is something that we have done once in the past. Uh, just wanted to uh, provide, given that we have two commissioners turning out by, by end of April, there is an opportunity for us to uh, reduce the commission member count down to seven, which is um, basically the member count for all of our other uh, regular commission slash committees. So uh, certainly want to welcome any discussions. Uh, the staff report did uh, uh, take into account the sort of calculating the average meeting uh, for the complete street commission meetings as compared to the previous transportation and, and slash uh, bicycle commission, which were seven uh, member groups. So uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of a context in terms of um, you know the, the meeting time. But other than that, um, happy to entertain any questions that, that a commission might have, or, or if there's a, a, a strong desire one way or the other from each individual, in, individual commissioners, uh, happy to, to listen to those feedback as well. All right, um, Commissioner Altman. Yeah, uh, just a basic question. How are the districts represented uh, in terms of the count? Is it, there's five districts, is that right? That's correct. We have we have five and, districts. Yes. And so the current the are all five districts represented by the current team. I, I believe so. Um, I will go ahead and try to pull up the map right now and, and hopefully give you a better answer. But I I believe all five districts are currently represented. I think we don't have anybody from District Five. Oh no, we do. Commissioner King. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and does anyone else, does any, any, any comments from commissioners or questions? I guess I'll say that um, I, so we have two long-term members terming out. We have two members who are up for renewal. And if, um, if both members are up for renewal renew, that means that um, we don't have any, any new spots opening up. Um, and that's fine, potentially. I, I mean, I did. I was meeting with some people this morning. I'll tell you more about that uh, later in this meeting. But um, I, they had heard there were four openings in the Complete Sheets Commission, and they were like sort of excited. People were excited about applying, um, and so I guess um, you know I like it when there's enthusiasm in the community to get involved and understand more how things work. Um, and so I, you know. It doesn't seem like the meetings are overly long because of nine members versus seven. Um, and it's always helpful to have more diverse perspectives on the commission. Um, but I don't have a strong opinion either way. I think I just, you know, I like being able to bring new people into the fold. That's my one point that I wanted to make. Um, Commissioner Cibrian. So uh, when I was looking over the, um, the, the, this thing, the staff report, I, I think one of the things I was also noticing on our agenda is like we have a lot of subcommittees. And I feel like we just went through all those subcommittees and we just decided that we like all those subcommittees and that if we reduce the numbers on our commission, it's going to put consistently more pressure on people to be on more of those subcommittees, which then can sometimes make it a less friendly commission to be on. So I feel like because because we merged, like because we are complete streets and we have so many giant things to focus on, um, I am in agreement that it hasn't seemed like having nine people has made the meetings um, last too much longer. I mean, part of it is we don't generally have a lot of meaty items on the agenda. And so we have like one or two and we can make those last for a long time. Uh, so it's the push and pull between having all those people, but also I value all the input. Like I think having more people gives us a good wider range of input. It does take a little longer to get through comments about everything, but I feel like the decisions we're making are kind of big ones. And frankly, like, it's okay if we take a little more time to talk about it, to make things 
um, to try to get to the best possible place. So in light of all of the um, subcommittees in the end, that is the thing that pushes me to keep us at the size we are. And then uh, to what Katie said, like I just saw the email from city council saying there were four spots available. And if we reduce our numbers, like that's gonna change that. And if there's excitement for volunteering on a city commission, like let's capture it. So I say just stay the same. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Brucey, is that a new hand? It is, I wanted to say something else because I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I've been thinking about how like 95% of our residents in the city don't really seem too tuned in to what happens on council or on commissions or in city government in general. And yet the decisions that our government is making are so important, um, so important land use decisions, how we design our streets. And I feel sometimes like the same 80 people are commenting anonymously or not anonymously in the almanac and showing up at meetings and emailing the Menlo Future List or the whatever, right? It's the same 80 people that kind of pay attention behind the scenes. And I do think commissions are, you know, an inefficient, inelegant um, gateway to being more involved in the city, understanding how it works and understanding the value proposition to being more involved. I mean, I talked for an hour and a half to um, a group of neighbors this morning about how things work, how things don't work, how things could work better. Um, and, and I think they left with a renewed understanding of why it was important to be involved. And so nine versus seven doesn't seem like a huge difference. But if it's two more people living in two more neighborhoods, able to answer a few more questions on next door, able to respond to neighbors and have coffee with them when they're having concerns about traffic or um, something like that, I think that can be a good thing for our city. I just, I would like to see us expand civic interest and engagement in the workings of government. I think it'll be a healthier government if we can broaden our reach within our neighborhoods. Um, and I think the commission could be one way to do that. Um, any other comments from commissioners on this topic? Um, Commissioner Lee. So, um, I remember when the bicycle and transportation committees merged, um, commissions merged, and um, you know we we all realized it was a good idea for the you know that there was a lot of overlap between those two commissions, but you know given how important it is to have residents with actual knowledge of the day to day experience of those streets, I think I'm also you know, um, in favor of maybe a little bit longer meetings and more input. And uh, it's a little bit awkward to be voting on this since I'm the one, one of the people who's terming out, but I think that, um, you know, just based on what I've seen over the last, what, eight years now, that um, you know, the more engaged people that we have on these commissions, the better. So if we have more people, there's more likelihood of having those engaged people. Um, any other comments from commissioners? Um, and um, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll say that I'm also leaning toward like more involved people in more neighborhoods. I mean, I, I was at the, um, uh, the Middle Avenue Complete Streets event in a tent on the tennis courts in the rain and there were not, uh, you know, numerous people who were out from the neighborhood who had a lot of different ideas about um, the, the, the streets. And it was, it was really great to see the people uh, who were engaged. So I, I'm, I'm uh, in agreement with that perspective. So um, uh, uh, it, it 
sounds, I mean, is, is, there, is there anybody here while we are kind of discussing and um, uh, does, does anybody who feels uh, strongly from the other side that we should have a smaller commission with shorter meetings and you know less recruiting? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody express that opinion. Um, so uh, staff, what do, do you want a vote or were you listening to get the sense of the commission? Yeah, no, th thank you. And, and again, appreciate the, the conversation here. I certainly recognize um, many of the points being mentioned. Uh, just before I move on, I do want to confirm that we do, uh, yeah, yeah, that yes, Commissioner King represents um, District 5. Um, yeah, so just put it closing the loop on that. Um, yeah, certainly. I what I'm hoping for is uh, just a, a a quick formal motion and a second and a, and a vote. That that would be that would be great. So we can have that on record and, and that can be part of the uh, the next update to to the city council. Okay. So before we have uh, motions and votes, we'll want to see if there is any public comment on this issue. Um, if there's a member of the public who wants to make a comment. On this topic of the number of commissioners, please do uh, use the Zoom feature to raise your hand um, to address the commission. I am not seeing any Zoom hands, um, so I will bring this back to the commission for motions. Commissioner Sheepard. I'll make a motion that we keep our commission size at its current number. Any seconds? I'll second that. All right. Um, any comments on the motion on the floor? I see a hand from Commissioner Bursey. Sorry, I had one more. Maybe this isn't the right place to mention this, but I know we want to put this item to bed. I'll just say that I was thinking that um, if the city wanted to do like 10 more minutes of outreach some way other than next door. Um, I would I would really quickly just talk about the school, the school, the PTOs, like the school districts, um, the little house or some other place where seniors gather. Cause I don't, I think like we haven't necessarily had a lot of like senior perspective on, the, on this commission. Um, and uh, I had another one that I'm totally blanking on right now, but but I, I just think like putting in a little bit of, uh, um, if you're concerned about not getting engaged candidates through the traditional recruiting methods, I, I think this is one of those things that sometimes, you know, finding people where they are would be, would be good. And we could probably volunteer among the commission. You could even have a rule that if you're terming out, you sort of, you sort of owe the city 20 minutes of time of like creative bush feeding to make sure that mm -hmm. um, we have, we're casting a broad enough net. Um, <laughs> but I, I just, I, I think we can, I think we can get great um, interest if we do a little more creative and targeted outreach. Uh, good. Good, good point. And um, uh, did, does staff have any commentary on the length of the period to make the decision and the opportunity to do some more net casting? Uh, specifically regarding the uh, recruitment, I, I will certainly share the, the feedback that I got tonight uh, to, with the city clerk, and then um, hopefully we can incorporate that into uh, if there's time for, for this iteration of the recruitment, if not uh, for the next iteration. I certainly welcome this feedback. Mm -hmm. I, I think also, um, I think that I want to say that Bellhaven Senior Center has recently been raised, but that would have been another really great place <laughs> to do outreach. And I just, yeah, finding people we, where we, they we are. Do have the, we do have the, some of the, the senior programs um, on campus as well. So um, okay. definitely is an, an opportunity. That's a great. very, 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 very good idea. All right. Thank you. Um, does okay so if does anybody have if any comments on the motion on the table and if not can staff help us vote 
Great, thank you. So we have a motion by Commissioner Sibrian, a second by Commissioner Luzi to uh, maintain the commission as a nine member body. So if I can have those commissioners that would like to vote affirmative or, or yes for, for this, please raise your hands and uh, just hold it up. Okay, great. I think I'm even seeing every hand. Great, thank you very much. Very unanimous group this evening. Um, okay, so we will now move on to the informational items where uh, these are items that are transmitted to the commission and staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the commission. Um, these are not action items. However, a commission, city commissioner, city staff member or member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on the informational items. Um, so are there informational items uh, for staff to present at this time? Yes, great. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, just a few updates for the benefit of the commission here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, just I, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier during our a previous item that we are um, going to be initiating the El Camino pedestrian crossing project. Uh, so that's completing the uh, the missing leg, if you will, at Ansonel, Ravenswood, and Robo. So very excited that that project is moving forward. Uh, we're also expecting uh, to conclude, to close the uh, request for proposal period for the quiet zone study. Uh, so that's a, another exciting project moving forward. Um, for, uh, I mentioned a little bit, uh, at the last meeting too, uh, we are currently moving uh, ahead with the Balhaven Tropic Calming Plan. Uh, the new bridge bowbouts will be hopefully coming out um, very soon. Um, the, I was told by the contractor that uh, it does require a special tool that they need to get their hands on before removing them. So that's, that's what's causing the delay. Uh, we're also hopefully set to submit a um, application to Caltrans for the uh, new bridge and willow intersection improvements. Some of you might remember this is part of the Bahia Tropic Common Plan. Uh, we're doing some um, quite quite a bit of uh, improvement from an operation standpoint at that location, both for uh, pedestrian safety uh, as well as vehicle to vehicle safety. Uh, so that's certainly exciting, very exciting to be able to hopefully uh, get that application into the system as soon as possible. Um, if you live by the area, you might have noticed also there's some uh, crews out there doing surveys, surveying and pot holding. Uh, that's because um, they are in that's so some of the prerequisite work necessary to, to continue on to the design for the Valley of the Traffic Can I ask um, a quick question about that, about that, Kevin? Yes. yes um it's been suggested at various points by various people in our city um, that the that Menlo Park might have an easier time making um, much needed improvements to to Willow Road um, if we if we pursued a policy of relinquishment from Caltrans. Um, so for those who don't know, um, Caltrans that this part of Willow Road between 101 and the Bayfront Expressway is actually technically under the purview of the California Department of Transportation, similar to El Camino Real which just makes everything we might want to do there, bike lanes, pedestrian refuges, you know, whatever, just signal upgrades, um, some factor more complicated. Um, and I don't know whether this is something that staff are currently considering or that council is currently considering, but I'm wondering um, if you have any update on that, on that idea, because I've heard about it recently again from another resident, so I thought I'd ask. Right, yeah, yeah, so that, that idea definitely had uh, came, came up in the past. Um, I currently do not know the the exact progress uh, of that of that um for that particular pursuit. So I'll definitely be following up with um our public works director, uh, and then I can follow up with the commission offline about the latest progress. All right, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Any other? Um. Uh. So was that was that the 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 end of the list and thus time for questions. I, I do have one more item, if you will, and you mentioned that a little bit earlier already, uh, but the uh, we did successfully had a Middle Avenue Complete Street Project um, public meeting. So it was our first public meeting where we had both in-person, outdoor, and then also the, uh, the Zoom portion as well. It was really well attended um, for the public section, but for the outdoor section, I believe we have close to 30 or so uh, participants. 
and that was doing the the raining <laughs> part of of Wednesday as well at 6 p.m. So definitely appreciate the public coming out and and voicing their support for or or providing their feedback. Uh, se uh, separately, we had about I think at one point 48 participants on the on the Zoom meeting as well. So it was a really well attended meeting. Uh, so the the next step is uh, just for the benefit of the commission that we do have an online survey that is currently open. For, for anyone that lets you provide um, their feedback and thoughts. Um, if you go online, you'll see some of the design options, et cetera. So certainly hope, I'm hoping that the commission can help broadcast the availability of that survey. It will stay open uh, until March 24th, uh, the Thursday. Uh, so definitely welcome all feedback and, and hopefully we can, we can get uh, some additional feedbacks um, as a result of that. Uh, and of course, the next step would be to kind of looking into those survey results, compile them, and, and ultimately it will come to the commission at some point uh, with a summary and some additional feedback on, on the project itself. So definitely stay tuned for that. So with that, I will conclude my um, updates. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other que questions or comments from commissioners? Um, I have a couple, but will uh, fellow commissioners, please go ahead of me. Okay, um, it being quiet, um, the two questions I had is um, there was uh, four things that were mentioned and I didn't catch the second. So the first was the crosswalks and the, the second was a something, something, something study. What was what were those words? <laughs> it was the, for the quiet zone study. And my quiet zone study. study. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, and... Um, Right. So the other question I had was the, there's um, work on uh, going on on the Willow and New Bridge, um, which I think staff said is going to come back to this commission. Um, the question that I have is um, in the transportation master plan, there are more than there is more than one intersection in need of pedestrian safety improvements on Willow North of 101. And where in the queue are those expected to have attention and improvement towards those safety improvements? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So um, first of all, I just want to kind of clarify that the um, the improvement at Willow and Newbridge um, would not be coming back to the commission. It's something that's been approved, but, but certainly if you have any questions, happy to take them and, and, and then fill them and answer them here. If I can't, I, I can do so offline as well. But but yes, there's actually quite, quite a bit of um, effort going on uh, along that particular stretch of Willow, to, to, to be frank. Uh, so this is, would be from 101 to, to Bayfront. Uh, I know that um, there are currently efforts by other agencies to um, convert all the crosswalks to high visibility. Um, there are efforts to upgrade those uh, the existing curb ramps to ADA uh, compliant curb ramps as well. So and, uh, along the, along the that stretch of Willow, uh, there are a couple other efforts that both the city and other agencies are working on. Um, uh, those are more high level conversations. So um, there's no, no immediate milestone progress that I can report, um, but they're definitely, um, so for example, there are currently some efforts at um, O'Brien and, and Willow, that, that is one, one, one of the locations that we're looking into. So quite, quite, a, bit of, um, quite a bit of work going on in, in that area by, by various agencies, including including the city as well um, at various stages. So I'm uh, definitely happy to, if there are one of interest to any commissioners, happy to fill those. And, um, and, and again, if I can answer them right now, I would, and if not, I can, I can Okay, is there, is there any, I guess, a, a couple of follow-up questions on that? Um, mm -hmm. Like, is there any uh, community outreach going on or planned um, so that um, people in the neighborhood can see what is being planned for the safety improvements and have any suggestions? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think from at least a city practice perspective, you know, typically when when something is close to coming to fruition, 
uh, the city will use the, the, the available avenue to us to broadcast the words out. Um, so for example, uh, for the Belhaven Traffic Calming Plan, every step of the way where there is a, um, a major enough milestone to alert the neighborhood to have the, the weekly digest, um, using the social media platforms to, to get the words out for it. So for, for example, um, Nextdoor, Facebook, Instagram, those, those type of um, platforms to, to get the words out. Um, and, and, and we'll continue to do so for, for any improvements that, that will be um, coming, coming you know, to, to the city and, and that will be citywide um, as well. So that's kind of a, a standard practice that, that we do to get the words out. Okay, and then the, the other question I had building on what Commissioner Baruzzi asked, um, you know, certainly like in the bad old days, um, Caltrans, their policies were to think of their state highways as things focusing on moving as many cars as quickly as possible. And, um, you know, pedestrians were considered something in the way of cars. And Caltrans's policies have at a state level changed, and there have been efforts, you know, from the executive level uh, on out to, uh, you know, proliferate those changes to to be able to make it easier for the places where those arterial streets are to serve multiple modes of travel. Um, is like I, 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 you know, this this isn't like an agendized item or anything, but I'm just wondering if there's any comments, like when we get to talk about this, like is the right, like relinquishment might've been the right thing to do a batch of years ago before Caltrans had the current set of policies. And I'm wondering whether it's the right thing now given Caltrans's current policies and like, what's the right venue to ask that question? Okay, yeah, great. Um, I would say sort of giving the scope uh, of the conversation that is certainly probably more of a, a city council prioritization conversation um, that that could could that they, they could have, but certainly the commission as a whole uh, are, are welcome to to provide your feedback as well. What I would say to that is that I, I'm making a, a note uh, of the fact that maybe the commission it has a desire to to provide feedback on this issue. Uh, so what I can do is I can, you know, just keep my eyes and ears open about sort of the progress of that item. And then at the appropriate time, uh, work with the chair and the co-chair um, to, to see if, how we can best agenda as an item. If, the, if there's a, a desire from the commission to have a conversation about it. Okay. And I will probably not be on the commission by that time, but I would guess I would urge the people on the commission at the time to consider this in terms of the city's goals for safety and what's the best way to achieve it, um, like rather than asking about an institutional change, like presuming the institutional change will is the right thing to do. So like start start with the goal, not with the, and like then is, is, is an institutional change the right way to get the goal done or not? Um, that is, um, those were uh, Commissioner Cole. I just want to thank you for your guidance and for and for that discussion. Um, uh, Commissioner Baruzzi. Is now an appropriate time to ask a couple of questions about projects that may be in the works? Yeah, okay. Sure. Um, I wanted to see, um, so I was meeting with residents on, I, I would love updates on two things. Um, one is what, if any, movement has been made on the Ringwood um, and Coleman task force idea. Um, it came up again today in a meeting I was having um, with residents of Ringwood um, who had separately indicated they might be interested in pursuing an NTMP. So then my second question is whether the NTMP project, <laughs> like are we, what's going on with NTMP? Um, I've, we got an email from somebody on Partridge recently. I know there's something in the Willows. Does everybody just need to get in a really long line? Um, or what are, what are staff thinking about that? So A, Ringwood Coleman, and then B, NTMP, and what can we tell residents who are chomping at the bit to get a speed bump on their street? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm gonna maybe um, 
look towards our assistant post director if you allowed for the for the Ringwood question. Um, you might have a, a better response than I do. Um, but, and then I can take on the, the NTMP maybe a little bit later. Oh, great. Thank you. It's daytime where Hugh is sitting. <laughs> <laughs> different time zone we lean the other way <laughs> no, no, it's, it's uh sharon park um so uh um the for the ring and coleman we're, we're really um and thanks kevin we're just getting still kind of getting started um uh and, and so the latest news is that the county project manager uh departed right after we kicked off the project so we're they're in the midst of uh, replacing uh, her. So it's maybe a slight delay in, in kind of getting started. So we are, um, that, that study is gonna be an 18 month long study. So there's gonna be quite a bit of time to get involved. Um, the conversations we've had with the county, and again, the county is the lead on that one. They're paying the, the larger share of that and leading the study and we're supporting them um, is, uh, so the latest conversations we've had with them is to try to get to outreach before uh, the end of school year, um, but sort of later, not not too close to the end, but sort of later in that period uh, to be doing some public outreach and and possibly some walking tours and other things like that. We're kind of in the midst of having uh, the consultant do sort of the background existing conditions and, and stuff like that. And we're working on forming the CAC um, uh, for that project. And, and there'll be some some more feedback on that. Um, and, and we will have a member from this group participating in that. And then at, at these meetings, that'll be an easy sort of conduit to provide that information. But we haven't finished that process yet because of the kind of project management turnover on the county side. So a little bit delayed, but still making progress. Can you, can you remind me on um, the scope of the project vis-a-vis -vis Ringwood? Sure. Where's the, where does, what's the formal start and end of it? Is it like, is it possible to, to bump it all the way back to the bike bridge? Does the um, main road intersection included? And would that, potentially speed up the process of adding a signal there? Those are the other two questions I had. Yeah, so the, um, I would say the intersections of both Middlefield and, and Bay um, should be thought of as included. The Menlo Park section of Ringwood is not included in the study. I think that if, as we talk about that study, if there's sort of things that we wanna do as a city uh, to kind of enhance whatever is happening. That, that's something we can just have a city conversation about um, and it might be easier than trying to formally fold that into this specific study itself. Obviously just from a circulation standpoint, right? That piece has a much different circulation uh, uh, situation, let's say, than, than the other part of Ringwood or, or Coleman, um, so. Um, NTMP. Great, so that would be me. So yeah, so we, we do have a subcommittee that has been tasked to work on the NTMP. I do not believe that we have a chance to, to communicate um, between staff and the subcommittee level. So that certainly could be something that, that um, if, if the subcommittee has a desire to, to do so, uh, certainly welcome the coordination of the meeting between staff and the subcommittee. Uh, but going back to, I, <clears throat> staff did receive the, the request on Partridge and currently it is on the um, the, um, the the wait list, if you will. Um, as, as many of you know, the NTMP program is currently not active at this moment in time, although um, we, we are kind of keeping track of, of um, the requests that are coming in and then um, periodically looking at some of the the available data to our on on at our disposal to to just assess the, the situation from a high level, but but nothing 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 definitive or concrete yet. Okay, so so do uh, residents still have the ability to use the magic words um, where if you say I want. A particular feature, or I want the NTMP. You like you get at the back of the line, but if you say I think that there is an urgent safety problem, then staff will actually come out and measure if there is a safety problem. Is that still the case? Um, well, well, certainly I, I would say you know wh whenever there's a safety concern, uh, we, we certainly want to make sure that we evaluate that properly and, and address it as soon as possible. Uh, I will say that, you know, typically that does not mean 
that does not automatically mean a, a request gets to jump to the front of the queue um, in, in some incidents. But so for, for example, more recently, our requests come in have been about site distance um, at, at driveways or intersections. So those, uh, we, we certainly want to make sure that we evaluate them appropriately. That doesn't really have anything to do with the NTMP. Uh, in the case of the partridge, that does certainly when it involves speed humps or, or anything like that, that, that does kind of fall into the uh, the bucket of, of the NTMP process. Right, but if there is demonstrate, isn't there some level of like demonstrated speeding that you would want to show that and, and um, like can can residents ask a magic word? Can you you know see if there's actual speeding, and then things will get done faster than the voting, which is more like it's discretionary, but it's not a safety hazard as much. Right. Well, yeah. So, some of us, some of you might know uh, as part of the NTMP program, whenever um, you know the the um, whenever we get a request, the first thing we would do is actually go out and collect the data. Uh, so we collect speeding, speed data, uh, volume, et cetera, to, to, as the chair mentioned, support um, the, the suggestion that there is a safety issue. So those are typically part of the NTMP process. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before, right now that, that is currently not active. So we're not, we're not actively doing those data collections as a result of any request. Um, like I mentioned, you, at, at this moment in time, what we do is we do look at some of the um, data that is available to us. So for, for instance, streetlight data, the big data, um, which collects, converts uh, cell phone data into usable transportation data that we will look at. Um, and then that, that's usually what we do to, to this, and of course, field visit as well to decide whether or not something is truly a safety concern uh, versus an NTMP item. Yeah, does, does streetlight actually indicate anything about the speed of vehicles? Uh, not, not to the desire that, that we have, uh, but it, it does have some speed data, yes. Yeah. It, 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 I believe they are delivered in uh, buckets, so for, and, and bins, if you will. So there'll, there'll be a certain percentage of, say, you know, zero to 10 miles per hour, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, and, does, and does staff help residents understand the magic words where if they report a speeding problem, then they might get faster attention than if they say, you know, I would like a chicane. I, I would say so. Um, I would say that the city of Menlo Park typically um, recognizes what is a safety uh, in, in their in their from their point of view a, a safety concern versus a you know maybe a concern of uh, convenience. Okay. Thank you, um, Commissioner Altman. Uh, just a quick question. What happens next with um, the email from Partridge? Just mechanically, what happens next? Right. So at this moment in time, um, officially is in the books of our wait list uh, for the NTMP. Does Amy know that? Uh, so we'll, we'll subsequently be communicating with the residents. Typically, what we'll do is we'll contact the residents and uh, kind of walk through the process and then letting them know about kind of the, the latest progress. Um, I just recently look, uh, made aware of this email, so sure. I, I don't know exactly what's been done yet. But in the past, what we have done is letting the, the resident that made the request know um, of the waiting list of its, of its existence, kind of the current progress. And we also walk them through kind of the NTMP process just so that they're aware. That's um, and, and Yeah, if they, if they so desire, they can do some unofficial um, soliciting of their neighbors to see if there's uh, potentially a case to be made whenever the NTMP program comes back in. And you give them a list of magic words. That, that there's no <laughs> there's no magic words. Um, usually, usually there's just um, they, they'll tell us what what their concerns are. Um, we'll we'll evaluate them as they come. Um, there's really no no magic words so to speak. We, we, we oh. like to treat them equally. Okay, so Amy would get a response fairly quickly then. Is that right? Yeah. So okay. we'll, we'll we'll try to uh, we'll try to look into um, you know the request uh, again. I apologize for for not no. knowing the exact it, details of the email. Unfortunately, no, I get it. No. yeah. Mm -hmm. But within a week or so, she would get a response. So it looked like people were being responsive to her. 
definitely yes we we typically have we yeah our, our practice is we, we we want to respond as soon as we can and, and if not at a minimum we'll let the resident know that we receive your email and we'll look into it for and then her request then goes on the N mtp list right right and then it becomes subject to other priorities so. Well, so the NTMP program in of itself obviously would be subject to other priorities, but no. but currently the NTMP program itself is not active. Okay, thanks. So if we had to tell somebody who was submitting tomorrow to say I want an NTMP on my street, um, if if we could assume we're going to start the program again tomorrow realistically are we looking at a three to five year timeline for getting i mean i'm, I'm curious because i because i want to be able to manage expectations and these ladies were talking about buying concrete and building their own dem speed hump they'd already researched tactical urbanism um <laughs> and 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 they'd already talked to susu roboto so they they had they had the horror story for, i mean i think of it as a success story but from a bureaucratic you know, my kid was in college by the time the street felt safe perspective, it felt like a horror story to them. Um, there must be a better way we can talk about this to people. Yeah, so so I, I would say at this point, we'll probably veer toward the uh, uh, the lane that since this is not the an agenda item, we might be um, talking too much of the details, etc. Um, you know, again, I, I think the next probably I scared next you when I said concrete, didn't I? Okay. Well, I, I would say maybe discourage them from doing so. <laughs> let's let's not let's not uh, tell them to go out there and just go ahead and build a speed hump by themselves. But but I would say you know as far as the commission is concerned, perhaps what we can do is we can um, initiate a dialogue between the subcommittee and staff just to to kind of get a sense of um, effort and and expectations etc. Um, and that will allow us time also to maybe. Uh, have a quick a quick quick look at the purchase requests and also some of the um, ongoing requests that we have. I, I would like to just request, and if it's not too much, you're right, this is not agendized, but that we just, let's not faff around with subcommittees on this right now. Like, let's just get, I mean, in a, in a manner that works with staff needs and whatever other backlog of things that you have that you're trying to bring to Complete Streets, I'd love to just have this item brought forward so that we can explore like what's the backlog, you know, as a commission and and like what can we tell people now and like what would it take to get started? Is this the best way? Is that a reasonable thing to do? Uh note it, certainly. Um okay. and, you know, in terms of reasonableness, it certainly sounds reasonable, but I, I do want to just sort of set the expectation that uh, I think at a minimum we, we should have a conversation with the subcommittee just to to make sure that um you know, they, their expectations are met as well, because they, they, they will be obviously be fairly involved in the, in the overall process. The, the subcommittee meet being like me and Adina and Brian? And I agree, so it's the transportation master plan implementation. Uh, let, let, let us, let us talk, in order to be closer to being on the agenda and following the, the Brown Act, let us talk about this topic when we get to the subcommittee reports which is next up on the agenda following any public comment that we may have on these um uh information items is there any comments from members of the public on the reports from staff or the things that the commission raised under these information items um, I am not seeing any Zoom hands. And so in the absence of Zoom hands, I'm gonna bring this back to the commission and um, move us on to um, the um, commission and uh, subcommittee reports. And I'm gonna take it out of order because of the way that we have um, a little bit of, of overlap. So I'm going to group them. Um, the first thing um, is um, I'll, I'll do a G2 downtown access and parking. Um, there was a downtown report uh, last night at the city council. Does that subcommittee have anything to share relating to what was at city council or any other thing relating to downtown access and parking? Um, 
for the effort uh, in an effort to be below our average meeting time i'm going to suggest that people interested in the downtown parking and access issue um, go back and watch that agenda item from Council. There was a presentation from a consultant, um, and I can talk with people offline about it. But in short, there was a presentation about you know what to do to reinvigorate our downtown. It was really kind of done from more of a like a sort of marketing and outreach perspective. There wasn't as much talk in my memory about the circulation downtown, um, and uh, it was more about what you know what can we do to make the downtown more vibrant. Um, what's the what's the opportunity here? Um, and it was interesting. Um, and I thought the discussion by council was also quite interesting. So that was uh, that was an agenda item last night. You can watch it online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, then I wanna, uh, th there was a meeting of the, um, uh, it may have discussed items relating to G3 and G4, um, which I was not able to attend and um, also, I think I probably dropped the ball in terms of making sure that Commissioner Shibian got the alert on that. I don't know if he did or not. Um, but um, uh, can the commissioners who attended that subcommittee meeting report out on what that discussion was about? Yes, I can. Um, so we were mostly focused on multimodal metrics with a slight dash of asking questions about other things that we wanted to um, add to staff's plate and staff being like, yeah, um, if we could clone ourselves. Um, so uh, the conversation that we had that was, that was um, pretty exciting was about uh, how to measure, about creating basically a local safety plan um, for roads as a way of um, implementing Vision Zero and this is uh, something that Hugh was pretty excited about doing. It's an established practice that, that other communities have done. There's kind of almost like a blueprint for it. Um, and uh, Hugh, do you want to say anything else about that quickly or not really? Um, there's an acronym that I always mess up, um, but it's- There are a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll just say that, you know, this is something that's, um, that they're, they're a lot of reasons to do it, some of which are, I, um, I would say, you know, to reflect, uh, you know, maybe some of the, the goals and the values that are established in the general plan and in the TMP and kind of flesh those out a bit. There's also sort of more boring bureaucratic reasons. It's a, a way to make ourselves eligible for certain kinds of um, funding uh, that we wouldn't otherwise be eligible for. So that's certainly not a reason to do it in and of itself, but a good outcome for doing it. Um, and, and the basic idea, you know, so of doing the so what, is, what's the word there's a uh, thing that you're talking about. What, what's yeah. the thing? I was about to say it. The so a local road safety plan is what they're known as now, um, you know, and, and different communities do them in different ways. Um, so, but typically, you know, it's in a, what you take a look at from a data driven perspective, what are the types of transportation safety issues that we have and use that to help prioritize um, where we want to make um, improvements. And, and the real focus of these plans now is to switch from sort of a reactive approach to a more proactive approach. So, um, you know, if you're following along with federal uh, policy, there's a lot of conversation these days about the safe systems approach, uh, you know, the basic tenets of which are um, people make mistakes and we need to design our transportation system to minimize the harm that results from those mistakes rather than sort of uh, kind of assuming that we can get to some world of perfect behavior. Um, and, and so that's really, you know, all of the solutions. So we bring the sort of full suite of solutions to help get us to the point where we're really laser focused on the fatalities and the serious injuries, you know, which is, is what our policy says and, and other Vision Zero policies will say, instead of just sort of getting distracted by everywhere, maybe we have collisions. And in fact, sometimes we might generate more collisions in the service of reducing their severity. So um, that was like the shortest possible primer on that and, and knowing that we're running late, don't wanna go into that more, but we, we intend to, uh, what I wanna do is maybe bring back um, at a future meeting of the Complete Streets Commission, sort of a background, there's a lot of good background presentations that we could walk through um, and some thinking about what, what how we might approach that effort. Um, and there's a lot of choices that we'll have to make um, about, you know, how detailed we want to get into data and some other kinds of questions like that. So that's something we could do at a future 
meeting. Um, and there's a little bit just to, uh, you know, allied to the prior conversation about the NTMP, you know, to the extent that the NTMP has been capturing some safety types of issues, it's a good opportunity to also sort of look at how, you know, say sort of local residential street speeding sort of fits into our sort of safety portfolio along with all the other things that we might um, want to be doing a little bit more looking at. So anyway, there you go. Thank you. That's a great summary. The other thing that we'd asked about, um, Adina, I know this is something we've talked about a lot, was um, considering um, our desire um, for climate reasons and other reasons to reduce vehicle miles traveled. Like, is there a benefit to identifying projects within the transportation master plan that could facilitate that? And should we be promoting those at some kind of um, hypothetical city council goal setting program, which doesn't seem to be happening this year? Um, and and a huge response was um, that they're, that's kind of what they're already doing, um, that, that the city staff right now are really prioritizing building a more connected network, um, looking at things like this, the tunnel, um, the quiet zones, El Camino crossings, um, uh, a lot of emphasis on major arterials like Willow Road north of 101 and Middlefield and, and um, so there, you know, and, and these are all, these are the high likelihood projects to reduce vehicle miles traveled because those arterials have such a sort of deadening effect on people's desire to leave their neighborhood, not encased in a steel car. <laughs> like it, so, so um, the sense I got from that and um, Huey, if you want to elaborate, you can, was that um, you're kind of doing this already. And if we wanted to, we could go through the TMP and say, are you doing this project? And you'll be like, yeah, are you doing this project? No, because it's this thing that we think is actually more vi vital right now. And we only have, you know, 12 staff, not 20. But um, that's that was my sense that you're already working on this pretty closely with that focus, with that lens. And uh, there's probably not a lot of additional benefit to our going back through the TMP and, and digging up additional things we think you should be doing. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that's 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 about right. Um, I would I will say because there was a question about it um, at the at the meeting, um, and thanks to the heroic efforts, uh, primarily of Patrick, actually, we soon should have a, a online listing of all of our TMP projects, including those that have been completed and um, categorized um, in some different kinds of ways. So we're working to bring in that onto our actual website, um, which I know uh, Brian was one of your requests. So um, hope to have that up pretty pretty soon. Um, it's certainly, I've seen a draft, so a little bit more work to do, but we're getting there. Um, and so will that include a pathway into the future in addition to a view into the past? Like how do you add, are you asking, it, will it give it guidance on how to add things to that? Uh, 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 no, just that like in the CIP, for example, there are uh, NTMP projects that are already in the queue for funding and construction. So if there is a view that says, you know, like, here's this, you know, um, uh, you know, like fast forward a few months and the El Camino crosswalk at middle has been done. So it's like, all right, that's been done. And then there's these other El Camino crosswalks that are scheduled, but have not yet been done. And then there's stuff, then there's work on um, other Willow intersections that are in the future and middle field that is in the future. Yeah, that's a great, uh, uh, a great question. You know, the, the, the TMP is sort of, so the CIP, I mean, unfortunately there are multiple lists. The list of capital improvement program projects is what we're like building, right? And then some studies kind of make their way in there too, but it's mostly stuff we're building. The TMP list is stuff that either is, you know, things that we do as a matter of course, so there's some like easy stuff, so they don't ever make it into the CIP, or they're like a set of projects that could then go into the CIP. So the funnel is kind of like from the TMP into the CIP and then and then into the done list, um, as it were. So, um, so I'm not exactly sure I understand what you're asking. Yeah, but... I'm not. I'm not asking to account for things that okay. are not scheduled. I'm. I'm asking about visualizing things that are scheduled or or, or that are in the CIP already. So there's this big soup 
of TMP projects that are nowhere in a schedule, but then there's a some set of them of are, that actually the are. And mm -hmm. so then a visualization um, would the thing that I, I'm, I'm imagining in my mind's eye is where you can see like which things have happened and then which things are, you know, known to be queued up to happen. Um, sure. To, yeah. to, to include those two. I am finally caught up. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, we, we can look into that and see if that's something we can add to the, the list. We, we separated out the, the completed ones so that you can see these are the done ones, um, but uh, we can look at different ways to potentially uh, look at visualizing things that also then have like an overlap of like either they're are currently being worked on for construction or about to be. So um, yeah, that, I think that, that would be, be extremely helpful. Like, for example, in yesterday's city council conversation where people were saying, well, like, well, what else is happening that might go slower if we added more scope to something? And having just having this clear picture so that like other people can also see that will be like will be a helpful a helpful thing. Now, you know, city council can always change, but like having a picture of what's being worked on such that if you put in another thing like the the, the, th the things that that will by logic not be happening at exactly the same speed um okay anything else from that subcommittee report and discussions thereof um I will say that we are also supposed to be working on the NTMP and now would be the appropriate time to mention that that hasn't happened yet. Um, ah, okay. that, so that, well, that wasn't that wasn't the scope of that meeting that we had with with you. Um, but but since it is in scope of this commission, does the subcommittee like want to meet and discuss the topic or um, bring it to commission? next for plenary discussion where um, the thought that I have on this is the last time or times that the NTMP was had subcommittees working on it is it took like multiple years and then the changes that were proposed didn't happen so like one is, do we think that the whole process of thinking about that, the, the NTMP is like so painstakingly difficult that we really do need a couple of years of committee work before bringing it to the commission? Um, or is there, might be there be some other proactive approach that the commission could just take, take on? I personally feel like there aren't that many ways to do this, that it dovetails with some of the work that staff are already doing, that we have a backlog of projects right now that people are going to be fresh, increasingly frustrated about. And I think the last thing it needs to do is go down into the black hole that is random subcommittee work. Um, it, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's just figure out how to get the wheel moving again insofar as the city is capable of getting the wheel moving. And if it's not capable of getting the wheel moving, then we should be able to figure that out and like, you know, communicate that to residents so that, that we have other ways that they can get things done i guess i just feel like we have a bunch of people in limbo right now um and and the best of times these ntmp projects took like two years from start to finish so i definitely don't see much benefit to our commission hovering on it for two years while people are in limbo um so, so what, what is uh staff think about in terms of like what is in the queue for the commission and does that um, is that a reasonable option to, to bring it to the commission for a, a, a plenary discussion? I'll start and then Kevin, why don't you weigh in as well? Um, I think I think they're, you know, the thing, we paused the NTMP and then we sort of talked about restarting it with changes, right? And so we haven't as staff like scoped out we've had like some general conversations, but I wouldn't say we've scoped out, like we could make change A, B or C and, you know, and all of that kind of thing. So the easiest thing to do would be just be say, 
we recommend you restart the program and then, you know, we'll re we'll rebuild the ship as it's sailing. Right. Um, it, to the extent that we think that it might need some change. And I, and I get the general sense from these conversations and other conversations that there's interest in, in looking at potential changes. So that would be like, maybe in terms of the backlog you're talking about, Katie, that could be the easiest thing, but then, you know, on the other hand, we could sort of meet, bring it, bring, you know, a very sort of, summary level of like, here's what's in it, like remind ourselves and have a more open-ended conversation um, about, you know, what's in it now and and what changes you might want us to go look at and, and think about and pursue. And that could, so that could also be done with very low level of staff effort. But if we have to get to that first thing I talked about, like here are A, B, and C changes, I feel like that fitting that into our schedule is a little bit challenging uh, right now. Um, but, um, you know, so it's kind of, maybe the, I laid out three options. I Hopefully those were clear enough and you can sort of give us direction about which of those you think would be the best uh, way to think about pursuing this item going forward. So I have two thoughts. One is that I, I wanna do whatever the best option is that's not gonna introduce additional needless bureaucracy to the process. So, you know, and I don't think it makes sense for us to spin our wheels if that's not going to actually help something happen. Um, so that's one thing. I do think there's probably appetite among various council members that I've spoken with to make it faster, <laughs> um, you know, which could be fairly minimal changes. And you guys probably know what they are. I mean, the bottleneck is always getting you know, a super majority of people on a block to respond or something like that, right? Um, so, so that would be one thing to think about. But the other thing I'll say is if we could have that open-ended conversation that you said wouldn't take too much time and you don't have a super heavy agenda next month, we have two seasoned commissioners whose last meeting is next month. And, those, and I would like to have their input if that's feasible. And I would also say that if I were a new commissioner and I were joining the Complete Streets Commission, and the words NTMP were mentioned over and over again um, in the first meeting I ever had, I might never come back. <laughs> so I would also just say, you know, is it, is it possible we could do a light touch on this next month um, without too much staff, without it being too onerous for staff, um, and then learn whatever we can do to get the ball rolling and then not torture new commissioners in May? It, well, the, 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 the the thing that that like what what else would be coming to the commission um, next month, um, putting this item aside. Right. So currently, what we have on the um, the draft agenda for April uh, would be the selection of chair and co-chair, given the, the chair is turning up by the end of April. We're also anticipating to bring um, a um, a signal a stop warrant at the location of Gilbert and Pope, which was uh, the result of one of the um, community meeting that we had uh, a few months ago with public with members of the public in the Willows neighborhood. Uh, so that potentially is coming uh, to the commission in April as well. So we do have those two items. Um, I, I will say that in terms of the NTMP, what, what I would recommend at this point is let staff uh, have an internal conversation about that offline, uh, just to make sure that we have uh, the proper expectations and, and also just, um, you know, in terms of our availability to, to meet something, uh, I think it, at this point it will be more beneficial for, for staff to have that internal dialogue, just so that we know exactly what we can produce by April and then allow the allow me to have that dialogue with the chair and co-chair just to see if we can fit that in for the April meeting. I, I think that's probably the best approach at this point. Uh, um, so so I, I would like to re respect staff's wishes there, there because there's like just so much important stuff going on that like thrashing staff will get us less of what we want rather than more. Um, so, uh, okay, so, so we'll, we'll like, Chair and co-chair will talk to staff and figure out whether it does make sense to have a uh, d discussion in plenary at the next agenda item, keeping uh, like like wh while some of the terming out uh, commissioners are still there. Um, 
Okay. So um, moving on, um, relating to the multimodal subcommittee and um, miscellaneous regional uh, transportation topics, the um, the regional um, all agency transit pass pilot um, got a regional update um, at the uh, fair integration task force like a week ago. And that's expected to start in August. And it's gonna have a set of um, public colleges and universities plus affordable housing developments and mid pen housing, which has some developments in Menlo Park is gonna be one of the participants. I do not know if any of the developments that will be participating are the ones in Menlo Park. It's developments that already give out residents a transit pass. And so the ones that have like a single agency transit pass will be able to use a transit pass on all the agencies. Um, and um, the next phase of that pilot is gonna be um, employers. Um, that's gonna start at the beginning of next year. So that is an update on that, um, which is something that the city has um, supported the, uh, the, those fair recommendations and that is what's happening. It's gonna come to, needs to come to all 27 different transit agencies for board approval between May and June. Um, so that is, uh, that's an update on that. Um, any other updates on um, the multimodal? Um, okay, safe routes to school, G5. I don't have any particular updates. Anybody else? Uh, no, other than that, I think there's a, uh, there was a walk audit that was scheduled for lower Laurel and then it got canceled and now it's being rescheduled because a parent square thing just went out about getting volunteers for it. Um, but I can't remember what date it's. So anyway, there is a lower Laurel walk audit coming up. Um, that's really, that's all I got. So the date is on March 17th, it's a Thursday at 1.30 p.m. So I'll, I'll share the information with the entire commission after the meeting. Um, so uh, transport for transportation master plan implementation, I think that was maybe covered um, with that intertwingled update before and the update from staff that staff is putting together a presentation of the things that have been done and things that are coming up next. Um, is there anything else that either has been done or ought to be done on transportation master plan implementation as relates to, um, I, I, I guess, I guess um, this is a relevant time to ask, is there a scheduled time for city council to review the CIP? It's usually happens in the spring as part of the budget process. I don't, I don't, there's not a specific agenda item that I'm aware of right now to, to do that, but, but yes, it will happen at some point as part of the budget uh, review process. I think um, a number of other things going on, namely the hiring of a new city manager may be sort of delaying some of the normal processes. Okay, so if it is not, April, then presumably it would be like May or something. So that will be coming forward in the future and it would be helpful to know from staff when that is expected to be scheduled um, so that this uh, subcommittee can put in a little bit of thought as to if there's something useful to be giving advice to council. Um, like going back on the previous topic, because this is like, an opportunity to weigh in if we don't wind up talking in plenary, which is that the history of the NTMP is that in the past, um, safety projects and traffic calming projects were controversial and they were perceived to be controversial. So having a process that was extremely slow and methodical and required like unanimous approval of residents was a way of like taking heat off of staff 
and it was designed to be like really, really slow and discouraging change because the change was likely to be politically difficult. So, but if there has been any change both in professional norms and in the overall tenor of the community in terms of desiring safety, then like, I think that that can um, maybe guide a future that is different from the past. So that is my speech on that topic. Um, the um, zero emission subcommittee um, uh, commissioner, I, I, I got a quick note from Commissioner Jensen. Commissioner Comey, do you have anything to add on the zero emission? Yeah, just the last update on the um, on the air traffic uh, vertical takeoff and landing electric vehicles. Um, I talked to some of the people in our in our company that are kind of interfacing with cities and selecting like why we're going to certain places first. And their rather discouraging comment was the politics of the San Francisco Bay Area is such that it's almost assuredly to never happen here. Uh, so that was I didn't I wasn't able to press for what exactly is uh, limiting. I had a small window on that, but um, that was a very discouraging uh, uh, sentiment. So uh, I will keep my ears to the ground and try to figure out what that's all about. I don't know if it was just the number of different municipalities involved or, yeah, anyway. So uh, they may not be coming as soon as uh, we thought. They might be coming everywhere else. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's all I got. Uh, um, is there, like, is there any place in the United States that anybody is actually working on, like, getting these things in practice? Yep, we have, uh, we have three other locations. I don't know if they're, they've been publicly announced yet, um, but uh, we've got, and, and that's a, we've down selected to three, that three large metropolitan areas that are very excited um, to, and, and, you know, kind of bend over backwards to make it happen. And it doesn't sound like uh, this area was uh, on that list. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then um, uh, what what uh, Commissioner Jensen said is that he had checked in with former Commissioner Golden about some e-bike and scooter things and will be able to relay that in a subsequent meeting. Um, so um, I think that is that. Any other comments on subcommittees um, or uh, comments from members of the public on the topics discussed by the subcommittees? Um, seeing none, um, I think the next item on this topic may be adjournment, that is the case. So, um, uh, and then would our next meeting continue to be via Zoom? What is the current thinking about um, Zoom versus in-person for th this and other uh, city body meetings? Yes, so my, my understanding that you'll continue to be Zoom uh, format. Um, until further notice. Okay, so with that, we are adjourned until next month via Zoom. Great, thank you. Right. Good night, everybody.